In this screencast, I'm going to show how to calculate the fugacity for a liquid water from Gibbs Free Energy. I'm going to use the steam tables to get the values for Gibbs Free Energy. And I'm going to do this at 98 degrees and then two pressures. And the relating fugacity to Gibbs Free Energy is the equation. So we have Gibbs Free Energy at two pressures, but the same temperature. And that's related to the fugacity at those same two pressures and same temperature. Now, how does that help us? Well, we pick this condition as very low pressure so that fugacity one is equal to pressure one. So we pick very low pressure where it's an ideal gas where fugacity is equal to pressure. And then we get the Gibbs free energy. So if we want to get, for example, G2 from the steam tables, we look up H2 and S2 and calculate G2 where, of course, this is absolute temperature. And so we're going to use the steam tables that are available online. So there's a spreadsheet on the Learn Chem e site. The link's given here where we can look up the steam tables. So I pick condition one at the lowest pressure that's available in the steam tables where it's likely to be an ideal gas. And then here are the other two conditions that we want to do the calculation at. So I've looked up the H values and S values in the steam tables. So let's go ahead and look at the calculation. So I use the equation as the definition for G, substitute in H and S values. Made the temperature absolute, 98 plus 273. And I get G1 in kilojoules per kilogram, but I need it in kilojoules per mole in order to apply the equation. And so what I'm going to do then is multiply the change units. So what I want to do is change kilograms to grams. One kilogram, 10 to the third grams. And then for water, 18 grams per mole. And this gives me a value for G1 of minus 8.037 kilojoules per mole. So now if I calculate the gas, I'm going to do the same thing for G2 and then later for G3. Let's do it for G2. I'm going to pause so I can substitute in the same numbers, values from this line in the table. So I've calculated G2 the same way, converted G2 into kilojoules per mole. And now I can go back to the equation. So I'm going to substitute in the values for the G's, R, and T. So note that I put the value for the gas constant in units kilojoules per mole Kelvin. So the units will cancel. Now what I'm going to do is take the exponent. So gasity 2 over fugacity 1. And remember, fugacity 1 is pressure 1 because it's ideal gas. is the exponent. And that value is 9.2. 229. So therefore, if you gas it 2, 9.229, pressure 1 was 0 0.01 megapascals. So that means if you gas it 2 is 0 0.0923 megapascals. Now, by comparison, what we often assume from the steam tables that if we're at 98 degrees C and we have a liquid, then fugacity 2 is the same as the saturation pressure. And the saturation pressure at 298, again, from steam tables, same steam tables. So we can see that there's a slight difference. If I calculate this difference, it's about 2.2% difference between the saturation pressure and fugacity calculated from the Gibbs values. Now, I can do the same calculation for G3, since it's similar, I'm just going to, I'm going to pause and write those values down. So first note that gives you energy, G3 at the higher pressure is slightly different from the value G2. So now I'm going to calculate fugacity 3. So the fugacity is slightly higher at the higher pressure, as we would expect. We increase pressure on liquid, we increase the fugacity, but it's a very small change. We can use the steam tables to calculate fugacity of a liquid in using the definition of how fugacity relates to Gibbs free energy. 